Hello friends, I am Juliana D'Souza. I am a science teacher at St. Felix High School, Pune. Recently, I have started using hands-on activities that I learnt at ISAR Pune. And my experience tells me that children learn better by actually doing these activities and drawing conclusions from the same. In this video, I will be sharing my experiences of using hands-on activities to teach this topic series and parallel circuits. I will also share some of the activities that I conducted. At the end of the lesson, children will be able to understand the characteristics of series and parallel circuits. They will be able to understand the advantages and the disadvantages of both these types of circuits. They will be able to make simple circuits for series as well as parallel and ultimately they will be able to draw circuit diagrams for both these electric circuits. So, let's get started. Before we begin the lesson, we need to make sure that children have learned about electric circuits in their previous class and they are aware about the components of these electric circuits. To initiate the topic, I asked my students to find a good conductor of electricity in their bags and they all or rather some of them came out with a pencil lead. Remember, I had also told them that I will be making an electric circuit using a pencil lead. For this activity, we need a pencil lead, a cutter, some connecting wires, bulb with holder, 9 volt battery and some crocodile pins. Using a cutter, carefully remove the wood from the pencil without breaking its lead. Make a simple circuit with a 9 volt battery, bulb and connectors. Mount the circuit and the pencil lead on the cardboard. Observe the intensity of the bulb. Vary the separation between the connecting pins on the pencil lead. Observe the change in the intensity of the bulb. I use this activity as part of revision for electric circuits and its components. We also spoke about the various components like the battery, the bulb, the wire, the key, etc. and the role that each component plays in the electric circuit like applying voltage, conducting electricity and applying resistance. Most importantly, the children should understand the direction of the current flow. The next step was to introduce the idea that there are a multiple types of circuits. I did this with the help of a role play. This role play enhances the understanding of the concept of series and parallel circuits. Moreover, this activity is not only interesting but also engaging. I asked for four to five volunteers from among the students and I asked them to hold their hands on either side and complete a simple circuit as in series. I played the role of a battery supplying voltage since I was in charge. I instructed the children that I would vibrate my hands and they were in turn to vibrate their hands and pass on the vibration to the neighboring children. After a little while, I asked two of the children to disconnect this broke the entire circuit and as a result, the vibrations could not be carried forward to the last child. This was an example of an electric circuit in series and the flow of current across the series circuit. To demonstrate parallel circuits, I called other three volunteers. For this activity, we need eight ropes and two poles to tie the ropes. I instructed that each of the three students should hold the rope on either side of their hands and in turn the ropes would be connected to a pole. We need to take care that the poles are not too rigid else it will absorb all the vibrations. I too held two ropes in my hand and I acted as the battery supplying voltage and my ropes were in turn attached to the two poles. As I vibrated the ropes, the pole vibrated and in turn the children were supposed to vibrate. At the end of it, I asked one of the students to disconnect and I vibrated the ropes, the vibration reached the pole 
and the remaining two children felt the vibrations and so they continued to vibrate as well. This was an example of an electric circuit in parallel. We also discussed the flow of electric current across this parallel circuit. The children observed that in spite of one student being disconnected, the vibrations continued. That means the electric current continued to flow through this circuit. Now that the children were aware of these two types of electric circuits, we took up the next activity and that is preparing electric circuits for both series and parallels. For this activity, we need 9 volt battery, 3 to 4 bulbs with holders, conducting wires, connect 3 to 4 bulbs consecutively in series as shown in the picture. Connect the bulb to the 9 volt battery and observe the bulb's intensity. Now remove any one of the bulbs in series. Look, all the bulbs go off. Now connect the bulbs in parallel. Connect the 9 volt battery to it. Remove any one of the bulbs from connection and observe it. The other bulbs continue to glow. While conducting this activity, I kept the discussion going as to what we should expect in both these cases. Based on the role play, children were now able to identify whether the bulbs would glow or they would go off. Also back then, they were not able to understand whether the intensity of the bulbs would increase or decrease or remain constant. But this activity helped them to understand this concept as well. We also discussed about the current flow and the voltage in both these circuits. Another objective of this lesson is that children are able to draw circuit diagrams. I explained the importance of a circuit diagram with this example. Just as an architect prepares a blueprint for a house and then makes necessary changes, similarly, the circuit diagram is a blueprint of the electric circuit. I encourage the students to draw circuit diagrams using their creativity. I then introduced the conventional symbols and asked them to draw the circuit diagram once again using those conventional symbols. I concluded the discussion by asking the students which of the two circuits would be applicable in their household gadgets and why. This topic has great advantage and application in our day-to-day -day life. So I would highly recommend using all these activities. Otherwise, the topics will be quite vague and abstract. Moreover, the materials used here can be stored for a long time and they can also be used for other topics related to electricity. The activities described here are present in the lesson plan linked in the description box below. We would be happy to get your feedback. Thank you for watching.